Hey coffee nerds, I'm Brody, and today I'm going to be breaking down the Lunar Scale by Akaya. Now, full disclaimer, I have done collaborations with Akaya in the past, so this is not a fully unbiased review or anything, it's more of just a breakdown. It's, it's really, I want to explain to you the scale, we're going to get into some physical features, some digital features, and then a little bit of you know, some of my thoughts and, uh, you know, what I like, what I don't like, and hopefully give you a slightly different perspective on what you can get out of this scale, how you can make the best of it either at home, whether you're brewing at home or in the cafe or in the roastery or sometimes on the mountaintop. So let's just get right into it. This right here is this beautiful carrying case. Uh, and so I'm just going to break down a little bit of what this is, what's inside, of course. If you haven't figured it out already, it is the Akaya scale. It's very small. As you can see, this is the scale itself. And I'm gonna get into a few of the other things that are in here, but just to show you this, it's very beautiful, very sleek. Put that right there. Now, this is a, is a really cool, uh, what do you call it? Like a calibration weight. This is uh, 100 grams, and I'm gonna show you in a second how you can use this to your advantage. It's not something you're gonna use every single time you use the scale, but that's there too. It's really beautiful if you like small metal things like this. And then over on this side, you know, we've got the mats. The mat is super helpful too. Protects this a little bit. Um, also just helps things to stay on there. It's a little bit rubbery. Got some stickers in here, of course. Uh, I'm not a huge sticker fan, but they do come in handy if you wanna stick things, I guess. Um, this is uh, micro USB, I believe it's called. Standard, you know, most uh, phones, Androids, and, and different things have it. But that's great for charging. And I'll get to that in a second too, but let's put this back in here. I'm gonna keep, keep this out. We don't need the rest of this, but really great carrying case. Let's put this back over here in the brew bar. So let's just start with some physical features. This is, this is the scale. Um, let's start with dimensions and weights. To be honest, I'm not gonna get into it. Um, I don't even really know, but you can see based on this, you can look them up online, their website. But basically, yeah, it's very light, it's very compact, and it's very strong. So that's what I love about this, this scale too. You know, obviously I haven't put it through a ton of field testing. I have brought it out to, to various places in the world. Um, but in terms of working in a cafe, it goes through a lot. And like most, like all their scales, it is water resistant. Um, I don't know how, if you, you just kind of like soak it in water, I don't know how it's gonna withstand, but from what I've heard, it's very, very good. You can actually get a, you can get a guard that goes around this scale as well. So if you're even more, you know, uh, concerned about it falling on the ground or something, it does have a very solid aluminum construction. So uh, I've definitely seen these scales dropped. I've seen them dented. And even just with the, you know, some pliers plying them out, we thought they were totally done in and it worked, uh, it worked actually perfectly. So very, very strong. But coming back to this, uh, this rubber mat here, I want to show you something really, really cool. So I actually don't have an espresso machine here as you can kind of see that. Um, but if you flip it over, so typically it goes like this. If you flip it over, you can, and I borrowed my friend's porta filter here. You can actually weigh out uh, coffee. It's not ideal, um, but it stays on there. You know, you can get a longer pad, I guess you could call it, to, to stick across, and, and it fits most uh, most porta filters. But if you have one like this, if you have a naked filter, it's very easy to just put on on top normally. But with this, let's call it a, a split porta filter, it fits. It's obviously on an angle, so you got to be careful about the the coffee grounds falling over, but. That's a really cool feature, but we haven't even turned the scale on yet. So let's get rid of this. Let's flip this back over. What I love about this, this scale is that you can see all the digits here on the scale at once, as opposed to the pearl. If you wanted to see the time, you wouldn't be able to see as precise uh, digits on the gram. So that kind of, that's great for pour overs, but if you're, if you're trying to measure uh, espresso shots and time at the same time, uh, it's a little bit trickier. It's just, it's very responsive and it's very sturdy. So that is the, some physical features of this scale. Let's get into some digital features. So this is where obviously things get a little bit more tech. Um, what is very versatile about this, this scale and the Pearl also has it uh, on the update in terms of different settings that you can cycle through. Just straightforward, I'm gonna just show you what these 
what they are, what they do, but also some of the applications that just make your workflow a lot easier. Um, so, you know, and some of them, quite frankly, I've never used before, but some of them are very practical. So this one, for example, just the standard, we've got the time and we've got the, the weight. And to cycle through, you just have to hold this and it will go to the next setting. So as you can see here, we've got the, the water droplets uh, symbol on the scale. So what that's gonna do is, let me grab a cup and I'm gonna show you exactly how it works with a cup and this nice little kettle here. So this is what I'm gonna use for pouring. It's gonna simulate what you might expect uh, because these settings are very much more useful in an espresso machine setting. So it's gonna simulate that, that effect. Okay, so this little water droplet symbol, it's the first setting. What it does is if you put this on here, let's say, okay, it's whatever, whatever weight, put it on here, you tear, and then you're ready to, to pull your espresso shot. So you hit the, the time, and then as soon as you stop pouring the shot, stops the time. So you know this was a seven second shot, obviously pulled very fast. Um, but what it does is it keeps the it keeps the weight there for you, even when you re remove this. So of course it's gonna change, but it will flash the weight again for you. So that that's the first setting, very simple. Uh, let's get into the next one. Now, so to get to the next setting, all you have to do is hold this on button. Now we're at the next one. This is the little water droplet with the square. Of course, I'm not using the official names here because <laughs> I think they're long and complicated, but you get the idea. Water droplet, square represents the cup. It's a very creative shape. Now, what's cool about this is, you know, because it represents the cup, once I put it on there, it tears automatically. Now, all I have to do is hit the time, assuming that your espresso machine doesn't have a timer built in when you pour the shot, stop the shot, and time stops. Again, the weight's there, you can record it or whatever. You take this off, but it flashes back on. Very similar to the last one. Let's head to the next. Next one is the right side up triangle with the square. So don't ask me what the triangle represents, but it is another really cool shape. And essentially it does this. You put the cup on just like the last one. Okay, it tears it, but it also starts the time. So assuming you are very quick with your hands behind the bar or at home, you also have to, it took a few seconds to, uh, to register there, but it stopped the time. <laughs> And then it's, uh, you know, we have the weight here. So we can take that off. Now we're back where we started. Let's try that again. Just put it back on. It's gonna start for me right away. And I'm gonna do a slightly longer pour, you know, what would be a more typical espresso pour, hopefully longer than 10 seconds. So we're going up 11, 12, 13. And then it stops for me right away at the 14. So. I'm not sure if that's a firmware thing or if they just don't expect you to pour special shots less than 10 seconds, but that 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 is what it is. So anyways, let's go on to the next setting. This one, it's just the square, the square setting. That's what I call it. So uh, it auto tears, it's supposed to auto tear. As you can see, as I took the cup off, it, it teared back to zero, put the cup on, teared back to zero. So this is great if you're pulling shots. Again, you know, you, you're not worried about the time. Maybe your special machine has uh, a timer built in, that's fine. But as I pour, it goes up. It's operating correctly, properly. Um, but then when I stop, it tears back to zero again. So what it's supposed to do is kind of just stop and show you, show you that number. Take it off, it might flash. So I'm gonna go ahead and correct myself here. After the fact, while I was filming the B-roll, I was really trying to figure out this square setting. Um, and as I noticed, if I pour very, very, very slowly, it beeps and initiates something, which I assume is part of like the, the first few drips of the pre-infusion of an espresso, and then it works, okay? So it does stay here at the, at the required uh, weight in the cup, and then I can remove that and I can see what it looks like after the fact. So, my mistake, sort of, uh, just takes a little bit of finesse. Anyways, that, that, is, that is all the cycles. You might not use most of them. You might get a lot of use out of them, but I typically just use the, the weight um, or the weight and time, specifically when I'm doing pour overs. But as I mentioned earlier, it is very small. I'm just gonna show you a quick size comparison. It's fine for putting a cup and pulling espresso shots as you see, but for pour overs, it's a little bit more 
finicky. But I, I literally brew this way every single morning and, and it's worked perfectly for me. Um, so as you can see, it's a little bit small, but still fine. I don't, I'd never really got too much use out of the app. So Akaya comes with an Akaya app uh, that you can sync up with this. But in doing research for this video, I was actually flipping through it and I'm like, this is super cool. Why am I not using this? So there's a bunch of features that I just want to show you very quickly of how you can sync up your lunar scale or pearl, but specifically lunar to your phone in an app format. So let's just jump right on and it shows you a nice picture here. And here it's a pretty, pretty simple display. So, uh, so here it says connection failed. So let's hit retry. It's pretty good about connecting to the device. And now look at this button right here. So this is, well, it's not a button, it's, <laughs> it's a little light and that light is not normally there when you're brewing. So that means that it is now connected by Bluetooth to your app. So that's, that's pretty cool. This, as you can see, is a very standard um, page where you can just, you know, use it to brew, uh, brew your coffee. I'm not quite sure why you would use this and not just look at your actual scale, but you can, you know, utilize all the functions that you would from the app. So as you can see, I just teared it with the phone here and then you can see, okay, like I'm going to start the time and I'm going to use my little setup here to show you a demonstration of how it goes up. Okay. Pretty straightforward. I'm not going to waste too much time onto that. Let's, let's pause here, tear, do whatever we got to do, reset. Um, but yeah, it's cool. What I think is really interesting and fun about uh, using this app and you know, I don't know why I didn't use it sooner, but it is, it is these settings uh, behind the scene. So this is kind of cool because I'm going to just remove this for a second, but um, you can, you can turn off this uh, touch sensitive control. So like if you're doing, doing something or, uh, you know, if, if you've ever used this, this setting before, I'd love to hear why and what applications work best. But um, I could see that interesting if, um, you know, you don't want water to, to interrupt or, you know, you just want to keep your settings for whatever reason. So anyways, you can turn that off and, it, and, it, and it, as you can see, it's counting down here, but we're going to turn that back on. It's much more useful with the buttons. Uh, auto off setting. So this is, you know, five, I like to keep it at five minutes, but you can have it to never set off or 10 minutes, 60 minutes. I'm not sure what the difference would be between 60 minutes and never, but anyways, uh, some people use their scale for a very long time in the cafe. Let's put it back to five minutes because I'd like to conserve as much battery as I, as I can. Now let's just skip down to that on that theme. We've got the, the battery percentage here. And so, you know, you can see right here, 75%, you know, I can throw this in my bag and, and go on a, on a trip for a few days. And I know that I'm probably going to have enough battery to last me. So that's pretty cool. Um, on uh, the scale sound setting. So if you're, if you're in like a very, very quiet place, maybe you're not trying to wake anyone up, you can actually turn those beeps off. I personally like having the beeps. Um, so I'm going to turn that back on, but it is, it is interesting. I never even knew about that. So, Auto connect, okay, that's, that seems obvious. Connect to the Bluetooth, maximum weight, you can just change that to, to 1,000 or 2,000 grams. I like to keep it at the maximum. You know, live like to the max. Um, weight unit, now this is super, super important and, um, and useful, jumping between imperial and metric. Um, so ounces, you can change it to. What's interesting is in the past on, on the Pearl or the other models, you would actually be able to change that just by holding the tear button. I'm not entirely sure why they took that away on this, um, but I'm sure they had their reasons. So you can just change it through the app and it's super easy, super straightforward. Celsius uh, temperature units or Fahrenheit, obviously that more relates to when you're brewing on the app because obviously there's no, there's no uh, temperature settings here on the, on the scale. And then timer settings, you know, for all these different uh, brew methods, you can change bee house, um, so yeah, that, that's pretty obvious background image. So we're going to go back now to what the next part that I think is really interesting is actually the brewing print. So the brewing print is, you know, if you want to make a printout for consistency in your brews, um, and, uh, you know, if you click at the top, the brewing tools, you can flip through and you can see, okay, here we started with the B60 as the, as the default, but there's so many on here, clever, Kalita, Chemex. AeroPress, uh, Woodneck, Mocha Pot, you can make up your own too. I'm gonna click on AeroPress here. I'm a, I'm a big fan of AeroPress and I think it, you know, it's interesting to show you 
all the versatile uh, ways that you can brew with an AeroPress and how you can kind of like program that, program that into, this, into this app. So, you know, ratio, for example, I like to brew my AeroPress a little bit stronger uh, sometimes just because I can. Um, and then, you know, we'll go over here to the time and, and what's really cool is it actually breaks it down and you can change all of these custom obviously, but it breaks it down, gives you a nice template to start with in terms of how you're making your AeroPress just so you can replicate it uh, the next time and the next time and the next time uh, if you find a good recipe. So first pour, you know, obviously 10 seconds, stir 10 seconds, second pour for 15 seconds. It's pretty obvious, but what that allows you to do is actually time, you know, program that all out. So we're going to hit next here. Okay. We have the temperature, we have the grind size. Um, I actually have to put the, the amount of beans in. So I like to use around 20 grams of beans typically. So one to 10, 200 grams of water. Let's hit next. Now this is really cool. Um, I'm just going to show you very, very basically how this is going to work, but we hit play and this sets us up. Okay. The 10 seconds has started. So this is, as you saw, this is kind of like the first pour for 10 seconds. Uh, it wasn't quite 10 seconds, but now the, this is the 10 seconds of stirring. Now, if I had something to stir with, I could do that. Um, but I think you get the idea. 10 seconds and then the second pour. And I'm gonna pour, this one's more 15. Now, this is not a beautiful printout, but you kind of get the idea uh, of what this looks like. And so, yeah, that's basically, that's basically the AeroPress. It just really helps you to time it out and, and make it perfect every single time. And then of course you can, you can stop it at any time or at the end, it's gonna, it's gonna run its course. We skip and we're done. So now you can actually see that printout and you can try to replicate it for next time. You can judge your brew. You can put some, some notes. <laughs> I brewed 58.8 grams. I basically totally messed up this brew. Um, but you can have it all there. It's really, really cool. And then you, of course you can put a little picture and you can save it. Um, and you can save that for next time. So that's cool. That's the app, take it or leave it, but it is really, really neat. And it has a lot of functions that you wouldn't otherwise be able to get by just using the scale. Oh yeah, and one thing that I did say that I was gonna show you was actually how to calibrate the scale. Let's get rid of this. So we won't need water anymore, we're gonna need this. So let's just turn the scale right on. We've got this awesome weight. This is 100 grams exactly, precision uh, cut, oh, let's say. And all you have to do is hit the tear button five times. I lied, you have to hit it a bunch of times. So anyways, as you can see, now it goes into calibrate mode and I'm just gonna put this weight on here, exactly 100 grams, put it on. It's gonna flash the 100 grams a few times. I should probably stop speaking because my breath is gonna mess it up. So now we're here, we're here, we're perfect. 100 grams, look at that, precision to the decimal point, anyways. That is the Akaya scale. It is not the cheapest of any scale that you can get, um, but it's it has the durability and it has all the features to back the price, in my opinion. And obviously it is small. It is smaller than other scales. So putting bigger bigger brewers on top or porta filters becomes a little bit more tricky, but not impossible. And, and I love how portable it is. You know, I can just throw it in my bag or at least with the case, you know, I can keep it all safe and, you know, bring it anywhere with me. And uh, to be honest, it is a little bit annoying having to go through all, cycle through all the settings every single time. It takes a little bit of time, but you get used to it. And you, if you just use the same setting all the time, it's not a big deal. The app, I, w I wasn't really sure who uses the app, but after digging into it a little bit further, I realized there's a lot of great applications here. So. Um, I would love to hear about how you use the app. I'd love to hear if there's any other ways that you use the Akaya scale that I haven't mentioned today. So feel free to put that down in the comments. But on that note, if you do want to see more from the Nomad Barista, as usual, now would be a great time to subscribe. Water cheers.